Artist MCAT question types you must know. Hi there, my name is Kendra Martell. I am one of the admissions experts with BMO and I am here to chat with you today about the most difficult question type that you will encounter on the MCAT and ways that we can begin to work towards improving our outcomes on these questions to improve our outcomes and uh, chances of being accepted into medical school. And so why is this important to talk about? Just as I had mentioned before, in improving our score on the MCAT, it helps to improve our chances of being accepted into medical school. Because it's one of the first sections or segments of your application that schools review, it is very important to have a score that stands out uh, from the rest of the applicants so that you have a better chance of moving forward in the file review process as well as towards the interview and selection process. And so, by improving our MCAT scores, we help to improve our overall file score and hopefully improve our chances of getting into medical school. In terms of the most difficult questions on the MCAT, I would like to first break this down into what is the most difficult section. The most difficult section on the MCAT is the CARS section. Now, I know this for a variety of reasons. The first reason being most students that we work with find that the CARS section is the most difficult to obtain the score that they would like, as well as the most difficult section to manage their time wisely, understand the question, and feel confident in their responses. Secondly, this is backed up through years and years of data in that it is consistently shown over at least five years that the CARS section of the MCAT has significantly lower average scores when compared to the other three sections. This is typically a very clear indicator that this is one of the sections that students struggle with the most. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that it is a section that can just be thought of as difficult and not prepared for adequately. CARS is arguably one of the most important sections in that there are certain schools that only look at your CARS section or CARS score or more heavily weigh your CARS score over other MCAT sections. With that being said, because it is so difficult, it is really important for us to understand how to approach these questions and do well on them. Now we're going to go into brief strategy about how to answer CARS questions. CARS questions have three different question types. Those would be foundations of comprehension, the second would be reasoning within the text, and the third would be reasoning beyond the text. For further information about the first two, I will refer you to our blogs and our admissions experts in either one-on-one -on -one sessions or in a free strategy call. The question type that I would really like to focus on today is the reasoning beyond the text because this tends to be the most difficult question in that it asks you to extrapolate outside of the passage that you are reading and make inferences which some students find quite difficult to do. So what we're going to do is just quickly break down the structure um, and the strategy on how to answer a CARS type question. So to ace any CARS question, we have seven key steps in our strategy. The first step is to understand the author's point of view. This is the most critical step in any question. If you do not understand the author's point of view, you will not be able to answer the questions that accompany the passage particularly in those reasoning beyond the text questions. All of these questions, as you're reading through the passage, it is really important to generate paragraph summaries in your own words so that when you go back, you can just reread your one single sentence that you've written down to get a gist of what the idea of or point of that paragraph was. Additionally, it helps to, on the bottom or on the top, write a brief sentence stating what the overall point of the passage is and what the author's point of view is. This will help you when you go back 
and are answering these reasoning beyond the text or even within the text questions to remind you what the author believes in or aligns with. The second step would be to identify the question type. And so that's where you identify if it is um, the foundations of reading comprehension, reasoning within the text or reasoning beyond the text. And just briefly, uh, foundations of comprehension, it's looking for information that's pre presented directly to you within the passage. These are typically the most manageable of the cars section questions as the information is found in the passage. However, it's really important to ensure that you have created summaries for each paragraph because if you have to go back and reread it every single time you read a new question, it can become quite time consuming and you may run out of time. The second question type is reasoning within the text. This one is where it helps you to evaluate the relevance and the validity of the arguments within the text. And so this might be asking you something about, based on this phrase or this sentence, um, what is the author showcasing here or what does the author believe? It's really being able to pull information from what is written in the text and make sense of it. And as we know, any of us who have done any of these practice questions in the past, some of these questions are not necessarily written in plain, simple English. And so at times this can be challenging. Again, this is where writing your summaries and ensuring you know the author's perspective will make these question types much easier. Now, the third question type is reasoning beyond the text, which I have identified as the most difficult question type within the CARS questions. And this is because it's asking you based on the information you've been given in the passage to make inferences or extrapolate to sometimes completely unrelated situations. And so what this means is it's applying the ideas from the text to a new or novel situation or a different experience. And this is where it can become tricky if you do not understand the reader's perspective. An example of these types of questions might be, you know, if given new information, would the author's opinion change on this? Or which of the following individuals might refute the author's opinion or statement? And so, as you can see, if you don't understand or cannot identify what where the author is coming from, this would be quite difficult to do. And so step three of the strategy is to apply the strategy for each question type. And so really it's just applying exactly what I have talked to you about in the previous step. Step four is to ensure that you're only using information that is given within the text, which means the passages or the questions. No external knowledge. This is not something that you can come into and have studied the equation on like you can in chem and physics or studied the definitions like you can in the bio, um, the psychosocial section, excuse me. Um, this is your idea ability to comprehend and extrapolate on data that is given to you just in this scenario. So if you do by chance have a passage that's about art history and maybe you have a PhD in art history, do not apply any of your previous knowledge to this. Just use what is given to you in the text to answer the questions. This again still applies with reasoning beyond the text type questions because at that point in time, you are still only using knowledge that is given to you within the question. That should be the only new information that is included within the information that you use to make your decision and choose an answer. Now, the fifth step in the strategy is to formulate your own answer. And so what this might mean is going through the question, thinking about what the answer might be within your own head, and perhaps writing it down, jotting it down before you look at the different multiple choice options. And by doing this, you're able to better see if you're able to extrapolate or relate back to what the author has said in the passage 
and it helps to show that you have a true understanding of the passage prior to simply looking at the multiple choice questions and choosing one from a drop down list. It can also help to reduce confusion because if you have your answer written out already, you can compare that answer that you have written out to the multiple choice options and it will help to negate any possible um, confusion in words with double negatives or perhaps some language that might seem quite similar. Step six would be to eliminate any obviously wrong answers. And this goes back to any multiple choice question. If there are five options, and you can see that there are two clear outliers that are completely wrong, strike those out immediately. You can do that on the computer system. That way you'll have less options to focus on and you can better focus on which is more aligning with the answer that you've previously come up with. And the seventh step here is don't spend too much time on each question. Give yourself one minute. If you're still really unsure, flag the question and move on. One question is not going to make or break your score, but spending all of your time on that one question and not allowing yourself the chance to answer other questions um, correctly will affect your score and negatively impact it. So I always recommend the one minute rule. If you're not sure, flag it, move on. If you have time, then return back to that question. And that is the seven step strategy to the most difficult part of the MCAT exam, including the most difficult question within that section, the reasoning beyond the text. I hope this has helped you and I hope that you can use these strategies in your practice and on your examination day. I wish you the best of luck.